In this video, we're reviewing the portable compressor, light, and power bank made by Ettenwolf. Hey everybody, as you can see from that intro, we're going to be reviewing and testing this portable air compressor and battery bank made by Ettenwolf. Now this unit's got a lot going on and some of the features are a high pressure, low volume tire pump, as you can see here, and low pressure, high volume pump slash hose for towables like behind a boat or an air mattress if you are camping. It also has a light. The first setting is 300 lumen. The second setting is 1000. You have the strobe feature, an SOS feature, and then back off. Also very thoughtful built in are different types of adapters that you may find yourself needing mostly for your high pressure pump. Like if you're going to inflate a basketball, football, and various other things. Right below that is your charging port to charge the device up and a standard USB port to charge any devices outgoing. Side note, if you're going to charge, the unit does have to be powered on. Now, I personally like that because I know when this is off, it's not going to be taking any extra juice, keeping any ports powered on. Now, rather than talking for 10 minutes straight about every little feature, I'm going to put on screen right now some of the features that this has and what they're claiming it can do, like rated pressures, how many tires it can air up, etc. Now, if I may have missed something that you have a question on, always check below in the description section. I always have a link to the product with full description of what the item can do, as well as a purchase link for said item. That's the fastest I could go over these stats. I wanted to spend more time testing it and less time talking about it. Now, before we go out and test it though, I wanna ask all of you that are watching this to please hit that subscribe button and I'll tell you why you should hit it other than just seeing my smiling face again. And that is because I am currently doing a giveaway. Once I reach 3,000 subscribers, I will be commencing the giveaway and we are getting super close. I believe I need like 600 more of you to just click that subscribe button. It doesn't cost you anything. It helps this channel out and I wanna do more giveaways in the future and I can't do that without more subscribers. So hit that subscribe button and I will be forever in your debt. And if you're wondering what you can win, let me tell you. We'll have a chance to win a boat mirror, a collapsible boat trash can with insert, a boat fender, a boat dash organizer, and a boat cup holder. If you wanna know more about these items, I've done a detailed review on all of them. You can find the link to those videos in the description section below. So what do you need to do to win? It's really easy. You have to be subscribed to my channel. Once you do that, also go over to Kemi Moto's channel and subscribe to them. It's really easy, you have nothing to lose except for possibly winning one of these items. There you have it, that's all the items. Again, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss any of my future uploads. And now, let's test this product. We're out in the garage, I'm gonna double check the tire pressure with a gauge that I know is accurate. And this tire's been looking low to me, so I'm gonna check it and see if we can just top off air pressure with this first. 25.5 PSI. Now, make sure your air compressor is powered up. Take your hose off and put the adapter on for car tires. Make sure it's tight. Put it on and lock it. I put it on the right mode. It is saying 25.3. Now, this is a lock style compressor hose, so when you put it on, it's going to leak a little bit, which I think is why I'm having that 0.2 of a PSI difference. Regardless, that is very close to my other gauge. Now I'm gonna zoom in here, set the tire pressure, and we will time how long it takes just to get to the desired pressure for topping it off. Okay, we got it set to 35 PSI. We got my timer next to it here, and we're going to start. Uh... 
We got about two minutes and 28 seconds. We'll just say two minutes, 30 seconds for a 10 pound tire inflation. It stopped exactly at 35 PSI. Now I'm gonna move to a more modern style car tire and I'm going to totally deflate it. And I'm gonna time how long it takes to air up one 20 inch SUV tire. All right, as you can see, I got the tire mostly low. I didn't want it completely on the rim because that can hurt the tire. And this is my personal vehicle. I don't really want to buy tires. So turn the unit on. I already got it set to the vehicle with the preset of 35 PSI. We're going to plug this in. There's only 4.6 pounds in there. Get my timer set up here. Start, start. So there's a few things I noticed in that last test. It completed the air pressure at the desired volume. Now, another thing I did notice is just topping off one tire and completely filling another tire, it is down one battery bar. Another thing I'm noticing is when I'm leaving the hose on the car, when I walk up to it, it is leaking a little bit of air, making that tire pressure slowly creep back down. Now, there is a reason for that, and that's because of these quick screw-on couplers. No matter what you're gonna do, they're always gonna leak a little bit. Now, it also advertises bike tires, and I have a bike tire here that's completely flat, we're gonna do the same thing and time it to see how long it takes. All right, well, I am human and I made a mistake in hitting the record button on that. You caught just the tail end. It hit the target pressure, no problem on this bike. And it did it in, I actually I was having a hard time turning the timer off, it did it so fast. It did it in about 30 seconds. My timer says 48 seconds, so for fairness, let's just say 40 seconds even. Okay, the time has finally come. We're going to test the low pressure, high volume pump on this. And for that, I'm going to inflate a pretty common tube that a lot of boaters are going to have if they're into tubing at all. And that is a ruckus water tube. As you can see, it is totally deflated and it was even folded up for the season. Just like anything else, grab your pump, but this time we're gonna take this hose completely off, find the port on the same side as the flashlight. Now it has an inflate and a deflate port. So you go and put it in the inflate port, obviously, because you wanna inflate it. So built in, there's an adapter for different inflatables. These are gonna be more for your pool floaties, the smaller one. Flip that off and it should fit all types of different inflatables. You turn it on, select your mode. You're gonna want the one that has the picture of like wind on it. Put it off to the side. This one you're probably gonna have to babysit. I am gonna time it and I'm gonna put the timer off to the side. Just so you see that I'm starting it at the same time. Start and start. And that was 49 seconds. Let's just say 50 seconds to inflate an entire water tube. And it's pretty firm. It's pretty firm. Now, you might have to touch up the pressure with a hand pump, but from personal experience, I have not found a portable pump aside from a hand one that gets these to the exact desired pressure. And as we all know, inflatables like this, air mattresses, towables, all that kind of stuff, the rubber expands over time and it loses pressure anyways. So a hand pump to touch it up once in a while wouldn't be a bad idea, but holy man, that's insane. 
That thing definitely shines with that low pressure, high volume pump. That is quick. 49 seconds, come on, that's crazy. And now just to be thorough, I'm gonna test the deflate function of it. It's not something I usually use on these pumps. You just don't really need it for inflatables like this. But again, to be thorough, I'm gonna test it out. I'm not gonna time it. I just wanna see how well it works. The machine does let air go through it. So there's no check valve in the machine. So you could manually deflate it even with the hose hooked up, but let's deflate now. And as expected, it works fine. The reason I never use those deflates is exactly what happened here, and it's no fault on the product. Once you get to a certain point, the deflation wants to suck against itself on the tube, and then it can't get any airflow. So you gotta jiggle it around, move the tube. But it worked really good, and it deflates it way quicker than having to lay on it. And if you're on a boat like you would be with this, it's gonna make deflating it a lot easier. Well, there you have it, everybody. I hope that this was informative on this Wolf compressor. Again, the link will be down in the description below along with some more information on anything else you may have seen in this video relating to this or anything else. I'm overall pretty blown away with it. The only thing that I could say if Wolf wanted to add anything to this to make it the ultimate make or break deal would be next to your charging station here for your portable device or charging this, put a jump pack port right here with some decent lead jumper cables. This would make it the ultimate put in any vehicle, air compressor, jump pack, etc. You wouldn't need anything else. This could do it all. Now, I know it's not advertised as a jump pack. It is advertised as a portable air compressor and battery bank. So I know that's not the mark they were going for, but if they want some advice, that's my advice. Put a jump pack in this and it would be the deal breaker. That being said, let me know what you think of it in the comments section below. What do you think they could improve on? Did you like it just the way it is? Do you think it needs the jumper pack like I think it does? Do you like the design? What would you use it for? I'm genuinely curious to see what you think of it. As always, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. to my daddy's channel.